and I are going to be touching on some topics um, based on AIM Activate. We're going to touch on WMN, and then we're going to touch base on some of the issues that are going on right now. So, Anthony, just feeding off of the success of AIM Activate, um, I know that we also had our Women's Mortgage Network Summit, um, our first inaugural. So, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the successes that came after that? I, I honestly, I was I was uh, really really happy about the way it, it turned out. You know, it was the first time that we really did it. Um, we kind of hit a reset button on the Women's Mortgage Network um, or the Women's Affinity Group for AIM at uh, at Activate, and it was just it was really really great to see. Everybody was engaged. Everybody um, got a lot out of the the really you know the the overall event I would say, but more or less they built relationships with each other, the members of that group. So you know all the feedback that I've gotten from all the women that were part of that group has been just overwhelmingly positive. Uh, but more than anything, they've also built some really great relationships with our team members. Uh, yeah. Being able to see that's been it's been great. Yeah, what was really intriguing for me, um, especially because, you know, we had a small intimate group and we had people who have never heard of AIM um, be in that group. We've had people who were in and out of the WMN when we first launched it last year and just seeing old faces and new faces both come together. It was really it was really empowering and it was really impactful and you know everyone seemed to have been uplifted and empowered after you know leaving the event so we're hoping to keep that momentum moving forward yeah and there's uh, obviously i think there's there's their uh, facebook group so what's yeah. the what's the name of the facebook group so the facebook group is women's mortgage network um you can go ahead and join the group you might have to answer a series of a couple of questions but after that um you know we welcome you with open arms and we hope you're able to join us um, for the for the next women's mortgage network summit that we're hosting excellent excellent yeah. so aside from our successes at activate um and at wmn i also want to take a moment to really address the elephant in the room, if you will. Um, I know that there's been a lot going on. There's been a lot of turmoil just you know, on Facebook and LinkedIn um, in regards to the coronavirus that has been going on. How are your feelings with the constant fluctuation in rates and how do you think that that is impacting our loan officers, our brokers and our owners to better serve our customers? Well, I think I, I think right now we have to separate a couple things. Um, first and foremost, we gotta, we gotta understand that um, we the, the the panic a week ago was all about interest rates and, and really all week long and even right now there's a lot of people that are just focused on the interest rate element of what's going on mm -hmm. uh, and and i've been trying to get everybody to understand like let's just take a step back and and understand that the rates um there, there's a why there and we put out some um, content around the why around that yeah that is soon not even be a concern and not part of our issue at all the bigger issue right now is the unintended consequences that are going to come um, of you know everything that is happening in our economy. Sure. When you see you know school districts across the country that are closing. When you see uh, you know obviously the NBA and um, the NCAA and the NHL have all suspended or canceled uh, events or seasons. Um, there's a lot that's going to happen, and, and, and what what that means to us as as mortgage uh, you know representatives is that you know just because your lender is working from home and that they're going to be in business and that they're going to help, you know, underwrite your loans and everything. Guess what? Here's what's going to happen. Number one, when somebody goes from working in a centralized environment to working uh, from home, um, there's going to be a loss of productivity. So the industry is already at capacity or over capacity. So turn times are going to, are going to widen even more. Uh, then there's the, all these other connected things that are required to happen in order for us to close mortgages. Um, and I gave the example in you know Massachusetts, their uh, their their recorder's office is going offline. So that means that after uh, today, you're not going to be able to do a new title search. Um, and, and anybody that's looking to do a title search is going to have major major issues. So all of a sudden, refinances in Massachusetts and in, in other states that do the same thing are not gonna be able to get processed. So for me, what I look at is I look at that as an example. I look at the, you know, are notaries gonna to go to people's homes to do closings? That's gonna be an issue. What about appraisers? Appraisers in these, in these areas where there's coronavirus, you know, you're gonna see them not take orders and you're gonna to start to see those turnaround times on appraisals blow up. I'm talking, you know, go from, you know, a week 
to you know six weeks. Um, it can be it's really going to be a blocker. So and, and there's so many of these other things that that tie in verifications of employment. If you're if you're doing a loan for a teacher in a school district that closed down and you can't get somebody to verify their employment, you can't close the loan. Right. So all of these things have an impact. And for me, what I want the mortgage brokers and loan officers to understand is that you don't. There's no need to panic, okay? What's happening right now is not, this is the, one of the very few times ever that what's happening in uh, out there is not just our industry, but it's everybody's gonna be impacted by it. So we gotta take a step back and just start to look at this thing a little bit more long-term than, hey, I, I used to be able to, a week ago, I could close a loan with the lender in 10 days or 15 days. Unfortunately, things are going to change, and we have to be—we have to really think about 60-day locks, 90-day locks. We have to look longer term and understand that there's going to be disruption to our processes, our lenders' processes, and everything around us. Um, so, for me, um, it's you know, floating or locking is no longer part of the equation. If you have a customer that wants the rate, you should be quoting them based upon a 60 or 90-day rate lock. You should be preparing for the worst case scenario, not because we're panicking. But we're being prepared. And this is one of the things I told somebody last night is like, oh, well, you know, people are just panicking, reacting. I'm like, no, no, no. There's a difference. I'm not telling you to go buy a lifetime supply of toilet paper. I'm telling you, you're managing somebody's mortgage. And you have to understand that if hypothetically your lender isn't open because they sent all their employees home or they're not underwriting loans or their closing department uh, has a case of one of these situations or, or any of these things come up and it disrupts the, the, your ability to close the loan, well, you have to be prepared for that. Your customer is depending upon you to be the expert. They're depending right. upon you to protect them. They want this rate. Make sure you're, you're, you're giving them a longer period of time than normal. Um, but you know, for me, it's just a state of understanding that I'm walking around yesterday. Uh, I visited a couple lenders. I was at the airport. And you can just see everybody is impacted by this. The, 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 right. Nobody's walking around smiling. Nobody's, you know, there's no sports on. The sports bars are empty. People don't want to be around each other because they're worried about, you know, getting this. So, like, it, it's having a mental impact. And what I really want to tell everybody is this is there's a great opportunity right now. And the opportunity is leaders and people that have the right mindset rise up during periods like this. Okay. So, like, be the loudest voice. You're the leader of your team. You're the leader of your brokerage. You're the leader of your community. Understand that everybody's scared. Everybody doesn't know what to do. Be the person that's leading on this. Go out and tell your realtors, hey, how's this going to impact you, Mr. Realtor? Help, you know, Go tell your title company, hey, this is going to have a big impact. It's going to take longer to get your closing package. Um, it's going to take longer to re record a deed. Your title searches are going to take longer. Start setting expectations around that. Be the person that's going out and leading. Yesterday when I went to go visit the lenders, they didn't invite me out. I proactively said, hey, my organization represents mortgage brokers, and I got to be in the weeds. I got to know what's going on with these lenders because I got to make sure that my guys are protected, my brokers are protected. So I want to go out there and see, hey, if something goes wrong here, what's it going to look like in a week? What's it going to look like in two weeks? So okay. you know, it was a very productive day, but at the same time, well, my concern is lack of communication. People don't know, so they listen to scary voices. They listen to the wrong people, and this isn't about fear. This is about preparation and being prepared for the worst case scenario and being prepared to serve your customers in the, in the highest and best use of your of your time and your energy. Uh, and the reality is what I love about the broker community right now is it, it more even makes me more bullish on them. It's a lot of brokers work from home. A lot of mortgage brokers are already used to working from home. So yeah. everybody else has to adapt and change and adjust to, you know, a different lifestyle from going to the office or, or not working from home. And all of a sudden, you know, this is this is our strength. This is our asset. We love working from home. So uh, we don't have to adapt. We can do what we do great. We just need our partners and, uh, you know, everything that's connected to us to uh, to thrive as well. Yeah, I think everybody just needs to, you know, be on the same page with that and just be as candid as possible, right? Like even amongst the broker community, but more importantly with our consumers, I think there needs to be that level of transparency as to what is going on. And, you know, with everything that is going on, productivity, I see that, you know, rolling as we as we always have. Um, and, you know, even with lenders getting shut down and schools being dismissed and things like that, you know, in every in every situation of frenzy, there's always another opportunity there waiting for us to grab it. Right. And just as you mentioned, this is what we do best. And we need to leverage that. We need to leverage the fact that 
hey, we're still going to do everything that we can to get you the best rate possible and giving yourself more lead time and, and building that cushion, not just for yourself, but for your consumers at the end of the day and letting them know that, hey, I have your back no matter what, but we need to build that into the system and, and just make sure that, you know, I'm going to still try to lock in the best rate that I possibly can for you. And even though this typically takes 30 days, maybe right now, 45 days is, is the real lead time. And just having that level of transparency across the board, I think will just make everybody feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. And, and, and to build on that, I would just say, like, what I see is a lot of conversations right now with um, that brokers are coming back and saying, hey, you know, my customer came and said they saw rates go down. They saw this and it's right. all great rate. What, what I really want to make sure they understand is that you, you're, you're the expert, okay? They're right. not the expert, they're the consumer. They're depending upon you to lead them and to be the expert. So understand, you gotta change the dialogue. They're talking about rates and fees and what you need to understand is you gotta say, hey, listen, Mr. Sir, that other guy is right now giving you a quote for 30 to 45 days, okay? When it right. doesn't close and the lock expires and you're subject to the higher rates then, you'll have missed the boat because when this whole situation with the virus gets resolved, that's what's bringing down rates. It will be also what drives rates up because once it's no longer an issue, rates will go up. Right. So you need to understand as the expert, you got to say, hey, I got your back. I have the ability. I'm going to I'm giving you a 60 day lock. I'm giving you a 90 day rate lock. This is not only about the best rate and the lowest fees. It's also about deliverability. Things right. are going to happen. Delays are going to happen. I don't know if I can get a notary out to your house. They might be able to say they can get a notary out to your house, but that's today. That's not two weeks from now. Right. Being the expert and being that forward thinking person is what's going to set you apart at a time like this. Because just like um, just like uh, your consumer is panicking, so is the other lenders. And so is every other loan officer. Everybody's got the same issue. And, and being able to have the clarity to, to look, be more forward thinking is what's going to separate you from them. Yeah, some of the comments that are also um flying in and, and thank you for contributing is you know it is smart to go on the offense and you know be able to educate at this time and provide value um you know amongst the community and also to our consumers and you know we talk about this all the time but brokers are better because we develop that relationship and we have that trust right between us and the consumer and and even between brokers um and trust is such an important thing in such a volatile time and moment like this that you know, building those those cushions in between time periods, you know, going from a 30 to 45 day is really saying like, hey, I, I have your best interest in mind, right? Yeah, I, I would just say to you, to the first point you made is value. That value is everything right now. So yeah, people get set in their ways and, you know, they think about value in such a uh, interest rate, fees, speed to close uh, situation. But, but right now, the, the things have changed. And just like we had a meeting with our team on Monday morning where I said, guys, everything has changed. Okay. We were going to have events. We were going to have trainings. We we're going to have all these things. This was our game plan for the next six months. Guess what? And, and we prepared a lot of time, invested a lot of energy and resources. And it's hard for people to hear this, but like, like that, just like this environment changed, our game plan changed. And I said, we have to serve brokers in a different way now. That's what we thought we were going to do because the environment at that time told us that was the best way to serve brokers. Now, how are we going to serve brokers? We got to communicate what's going on. We have to out communicate everybody on everything. We got to make sure they're informed. They know what's going on with their lenders. They know what's going on in the market. They understand what's going on with rates. They understand what's going on with prepay speeds and MSR valuations. And we have to bring them value in a way that makes them a better broker and puts them in a position to win more customers and be better than their competition. And that's what we're doing. And that's what we're going to continue to do. And, and I'm excited about it because uh, yeah. it, it, the, the pace that we're working at right now is just as fast as it was before. But the pace that we're putting out content and trying to provide value is much, much faster than ever before. I agree. I agree. And and on the topic of putting out content, um, there was a question in the comments um, asking about a tangible prepared checklist. Um, what are your thoughts on that? My, 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 I mean, you know my thoughts. So my thoughts are, uh, if you're, you separate the two things, business page. So AIM has a business page. Let's just look at it as from what we do here at AIM. AIM as, as a company, which is a, an organization and has its own business page, has to communicate in a certain way. That's People don't have the relationship um, with me that they have with AIM. There's two different things. That's a company. It's a very different, that's an organization. For me, when I create content, it's all about how do I provide value? And I don't, I don't want to have a checklist. I don't want to be prepared. I need to be 
I need to see a problem, identify a pain point, and provide valuable content that answers for that pain point. If I'm doing checklists and overly prepared, it's going to be crap content. It's going to be something that's prepared. It's not bringing value. It's overthought. So for me, when I see what my members and my brokers are telling me that their issues are, I on that at that minute, I'm saying, okay, great. How do I answer for this? How do I provide a value? Meaning, is there a subject matter expert I can go out and get to help me provide content, whether it's an interview or having them create a video to share with them or me talk to them and learn about the subjects? So to give you an idea, this week, for example, all I heard about last week was, you know, treasuries are down, MBSs are improved, but interest rates that brokers are, are, are seeing are not getting better. Right. So what I did is I literally spent my entire Sunday and Monday, like literally the entire two days, and I called every single person that's in capital markets at all the different lenders. And I said, and I literally, for as long as they would talk to me, I questioned them about margin calls and MSR values and, and MBS values and the decoupling of MS, MBS uh, and um, treasuries. And, and, and because I want to learn, I want to understand, like, I don't know. My brokers don't know. I need to be able to explain this to me. They're looking for me for answers. I got to provide them with value. So for two days, I learned it. Um, and, and that's why I started to do the interviews with Rob Piclo and Rob Chrisman. Um, I did one with, um, with Brian View as well uh, and Logan uh, as well. And, and the whole reason was I want them to be able to get the right information because I know if they have the right information that they will t put their expert hat on, go back to their consumers and do what they do best, which is serve consumers. So yeah. hopefully we provide that value this week, but, but don't be too in the box. Understand who your customer is. You have consumers and then you have realtors and then you have whoever your other referral sources are. Understand yeah. what their pain points are. And don't talk about things that matter to you. Talk about things that matter to them. I think right now is a good time to really start thinking outside of the box. Um, I know that there are a couple questions as to, you know, as brokers, what are our what are our top items that we need to prepare? And I think, you know, to speak on that is just prepare to have an open mind, you know, and and prepare to be <clears throat> productive as much as you can with reaction to what's going on with an educated background, right? And having those having those bullet points ready to go. Um, Not, but, but but to me, it's about being an expert. So so like yeah. if, if you want to be an expert at something, meaning if you want to talk about the market, if you want to talk about the economy and how coronavirus is going to impact the economy, get off of CNN or MSNBC or, or wherever you get the, the crap news that's just packaged in a way to scare people and actually go out and really learn about what's going on, meaning identify the people that are economists and what they're saying, read, read what they're saying, listen to their interviews, invest the time in becoming an expert, and then go take that information and educate consumers and real estate agents. But, but, but for me, people can be so uh, high level and, and a lot of people just read headlines. And, and like I put out a video last night about this whole, you know, EPO um, uh, situation and prepay speeds and whatnot. And I had all these questions and, I, and every single person that asked me a question that told me they didn't watch the video, I literally said, watch the video, okay? You're asking me a question that gets answered in the video. So, so if you wanna create content that's valuable in order for you to be the person of value, you have to be the expert. And it's not be the expert at mortgages, it's be the expert at what's relevant to your audience. And if your audience cares about what, how this is gonna impact the economy, how they can you know, uh, work from home, how they can be more efficient, how they can be more productive or whatever their situation is, become an expert at those subjects. Yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, I, I don't want to take too, too much time, but I think overall the moral of this is, you know, be candid, be educated, right? And communicate, communicate that across the board with all of your consumers so that they understand what's going on and so that the two of you can position um, the situation as best as possible. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I would just say either you're 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 you know a part of the audience or you're the person that's leading. And right. and I think right now that in in all of our lives, if your audience is realtors, if your audience is consumers, you you have to not be a spectator and be a leader, right. and you have to speak from a position of care and compassion. And and again, you know, it doesn't always have to be related to mortgages. You can just talk to them out loud. And just help them understand you know 
every consumer out there wants to know why the stock market went down 2,000 points and went, went up 1,000 points and what's going on with rates. Everybody wants to understand that stuff. So sometimes just being um, the translator of, of that information in an adjustable way that, that's friendly to, to that audience, sure. is all that you need to do to be the expert and be the uh, thought leader. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Anthony. I, I really appreciate the tidbits, and I'm sure the broker community is really appreciative of all of the updates that you've been providing on a daily basis. Um, so before I forget, don't forget to join us next Monday at 2 p.m. Um, Keith Nickel from Northwestern Mutual is also joining us on Facebook Live to talk about investing and building wealth long term. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I appreciate it. Bye, guys.